So here to tell us a little bit about it is Stuart Feldman. He's a partner in the, the firm of Feldman and Associates from Houston, Texas. 30 years experience in legal tax financial transactions. One of the foremost experts in captive insurance alternative risk planning. Thank you very much. Stuart Feldman, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I wish we were only 30 years. I think it's, I think we passed 35 years at this point. Uh, it's not nice to uh, be with you today. Some very exciting presentations. Uh, I grew up in, uh, even though I'm from Texas, so the last 35 years I grew up in an area where there was a lot of lumbering. Uh, I grew up in western New York and uh, lived in Pennsylvania for several years, so it's interesting to see some folks from some of the towns of which I passed through over a period of years. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is really two concepts. The first is the IC DISC, Interest Charge Domestic International Sales Corporation. And the second one is alternative risk planning or capital insurance. Really what we're talking about is God's work here. We're talking about reducing federal income taxes. Um, we've talked about cost pressures. We've talked about competitive pressures on your business. There's nothing that our firm of 50 people in Houston, Texas does to bring revenue to the table. What we do is we bring cost savings uh, in, the, in the state, federal, uh, uh, miscellaneous tax, employment tax areas, and of course in the, uh, in the estate tax area. What we focus on is federal income tax issues. And what you'll find is, um, you folks may have gotten aggravated over a period of years where you read in the newspaper that Apple has a billion or two billion or three billion dollars sitting around outside the United States, or Caterpillar has 10 billion dollars floating around outside the United States. Uh, or that what used to be Arthur Anderson, the accounting firm, now the consulting firm of Censure, is headquartered in Bermuda originally and now Ireland. Um, the point is that there's tax money tools available to larger businesses to make their businesses more efficient and more competitive. However, for the closely held family business, there's also a bunch of tools available out there. It's just that the dissemination of that information doesn't make it down to the closely held business. It doesn't make it down to small towns in Pennsylvania and New York and, and in Georgia or Tennessee. Uh, the dissemination of information is much, much more difficult. Uh, our firm is always concentrated on uh, the closely held business. Obviously, we do a lot of work with people that are manufacturers in the oil patch within Texas, but our clients span from California all the way to Georgia. And what we do is we design, structure, draft, and implement tools, planning, working with your local CPA to make the, the, the tax efficiency of your business much higher to enable you to bring more dollars to the bottom line. So the first tool we're going to talk about is the interest charge disk, the IC disk. And I believe Steve mentioned it was a new tool, and I'm not here to criticize Steve. But new means it really began in the 1960s. So dating back to the 1960s, the United States has had programs in place to facilitate and encourage the export of goods. Why? Well, if you, if you, if you look at Europe, when an Airbus takes off from Toulouse, France, and lands in Pittsburgh or, or Los Angeles or in Washington, D.C., that product, that Airbus that cost $100 million, receives a rebate of that tax, value added tax from Europe. And in Europe, uh, the countries are financed partially by income tax, but to a huge extent by VAT tax. So their income tax may be 20%, but the VAT tax is also 20%. So that VAT tax is rebated in full upon export from the country. Why? It encourages Germany to export. It encourages Italy to export. It encourages Spain to export. But what happens when you export a good? You still pay the same federal income tax because we don't have a VAT tax. We don't have a sales tax upon export. So back in the 1960s, Congress said, how do we tackle this? How do we deal with this? And Congress said, well, we're going to come up with a program, and it's changed over the period of years. But if we're going to come up with a program to give you folks 
the incentive to, to export goods from the United States abroad so that you earn foreign currency so that our balance of payments are more in line. That's been around for 40, 50 years. It's gone through certain iterations as the what was GATT, the General Agreement on Tariff and Trades, and the World Trade Organization would beat up on the United States because the United States is one vote and the rest of the world is 170 votes. So we put programs in place and then the world GATT or the World Trade Organization would declare them to be illegal trade subsidies and Congress would then allow the money to be repatriated to the United States at no tax and we'll pass another law and that would be in place for 10 years and then the same process happens again. So with tax planning, nothing's forever, but if you get five or ten years out of something, it's great, it's a home run. Usually the payback is about three months. So the current iteration of this is the IC disc. And basically what happens is, move ahead with the slides a little bit here. Uh, we're going back all the way to 1971. Uh, it actually began even earlier, but we go back to 71, where the incentives came in, in place for U.S. companies to export. Obviously, the incentive behind this wasn't the lumber industry. The incentive behind this was Boeing, Caterpillar, Microsoft, later in the years, companies that really export a huge number of goods that are made in the United States. So the law was changed over a period of years, and now we have the IC disc. The fact that there are only, in the last statistics available, 2008, only 1,600. I see this in the United States is embarrassing. It shows you how poorly the information is disseminated out there. Anyone that does exports of any material amount, when I say material amount, it's based upon your profitability. But if you've got 500,000 or a million dollars of export profits, it's silly not to do this work because you're just leaving money on the table. It's like not picking up $100 bills. What the IC disc does as a, on a bottom line basis is it gives you a 60% reduction in federal income taxes. 60%. So your 40% tax rate approximately all of a sudden becomes a 24% tax rate. And then there's state tax, STD, TV, state tax benefits that could be put in place. And there's estate planning benefits that can be put in place. It's a freebie that's out there. Why it's not done beats the heck out of me, but it's not done by a lot of companies. It is, however, sophisticated planning. This is something that you don't do at home. Um, uh, the regulations are hundreds of pages of long. Certainly, you can do a very simplified version of it, but you leave a lot of dollars on the table by simply forming the company and, and doing it in a simplistic manner. It's like having a heart condition and taking aspirin. Certainly, the aspirin helps you if you have a heart condition, but you're leaving, leaving a lot on, on the table by not by going to the doctor and, and, and more thoroughly uh, putting a program in place. Uh, again, we're going to give you a high level presentation of an IC disc. It is a C Corp. Uh, that is, it's not a flow through entity, it is a C Corp. There has to be an IRS procedure that's followed. In terms of capitalization, elections to the Internal Revenue Service, separate books and records, separate tax return that's filed throughout the year. Um, the ownership of it has a great amount of flexibility. It can be owned by anyone. It does not have to be related to the company. It can be owned by children, trusts, partnerships, employees, executives, and the like. So there's a lot of flexibility. The point is that the IC disc, when you when you flow the money through the various steps, you have a 60% reduction in your federal income tax. Now, how does this happen? Well, here's one way. There's several ways to do the IC disc. This is not the most advantaged way, but it is, it is a way. Uh, you've got shareholders. The shareholders own the operating business. They also own the IC disc. The company goes ahead and sells goods to a non-U.S. customer. The company pays money over to this IC disc, this interest charge disc, that's formed and operated pursuant to the Internal Revenue Code. That company is tax exempt. Zero federal income tax. Or it's a for-profit. 
for-profit tax-exempt entity, which in the United States is not that odd. Some of you may know that the NFL, the National Football League, with its $12, $12 billion of revenue, is also a tax-exempt entity. Anyone know that? Do you know why? It's because the Washington Redskins influence Congress. That's the reason. There's no economic reason behind it. It's because 400 and 435 members of the House and 100 senators voted for it many years ago. We can come up with all kinds of academic reasons why it should be tax exempt, but it's a bunch of poppycock. It's tax exempt because it's tax exempt. Why is Carnival Cruise Lines uh, and, the, and the other uh, 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 the, the, the various cruise lines, why are they largely tax exempt? They're largely tax exempt because they convinced Congress to pass laws that make them tax exempt. Why are foreign airlines like British Airways when they fly to the United States tax exempt? Because they're tax exempt. Because that's what Congress says. And why, when we get to the provisions with regard to captive insurance companies, why are many insurance companies out there tax exempt? Again, because Congress says they're tax exempt. So when you deal with federal income taxes, the idea is you can get caught up in your own analysis. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the whys are. It's just the way it is. We drive on the right side of the road. Don't ask why. We drive on the right side of the road. You can go through all the analysis you want, but if you drive on the left, you're going to get killed. With regard to with regard to federal income taxes, you just have to understand certain things are the way they are because of the way they are. You just have to move down the road. So that here we have a provision that Congress has said in its, in its great wisdom. Congress has said, uh, uh, we're going to make this tax exempt. Well, if, if, if Congress says, we'll give you this tax exempt entity, yourselves as a businessman, business person, should take advantage of that. If you don't, shame on you. It's your own fault. Don't complain about Apple with their billions of dollars of tax exempt profits outside the United States. If Congress says, here's a provision for you, and you don't want to take advantage of it, and it's been around for 50 years. That's all I can say. So what happens is this company continues to operate under this scenario, there's various scenarios, just as it does, but at the end of the day, we take half of the export profits. What are the export profits? The export profits basically are a net income concept as if your export division or export activities were a separate business. So you take revenue, less expenses, less GES and A, general sales and overhead, and you come up with a semi-pre-tax number. That's the profit from your export activities. Obviously, there's the ability to boost that a bit. So it's sometimes closer to a gross profit number than it is a net income number. But whatever the number is, the profit from that export division, you divide it in two, and you pay half of it over to this tax exempt entity. Why half? It's the way it is. That's the way Congress wrote the law. This business gets a deduction for that amount. This business picks it up on its income tax return, but it doesn't pay any tax. Deduction, no, no tax. So if you have, let's say, a couple million dollars, let's say two million dollars of export profits, a million dollars over here, Deduction over here for a million dollars, no tax over here. You now have a million dollars of tax exempt income, and you can take it out in a few months to the shareholders, or to the grandchildren, or to the trust, or to your key management, and only pay 23% tax. Before Mr. Obama changed the law about a year and a half ago, it used to be 15% tax. Tax over here, if it's a flow through entity, ignoring your state tax issues. Is about 45%. It's marketed as a 39.6% tax, but that's poppycock. It's really 45%. The federal income tax is 45%. If you think it's not, you know, you're working on a different internal revenue code than I am. So you're, you're saving the difference between 45% and 24% by setting up an operating incentive. What we do as lawyers, we've got about 50 people in Houston, we set up and operate this activity for you, if you wish. And uh, uh, 
you hold the checkbook, you control the checkbook, but we operate the entity, keep it in compliance, do the tax returns, and the calculations. So this is one approach, we call this the indirect approach. There's another approach, it's called the, we call it the 100% tax benefit approach, where you take 100% of your export profits. If you recall here, I talked in terms of taking 50% of your export profits. Under this approach, you take 100% of your export profits and you pay them over to the export entity. I'm, I'm sorry, they're earned by the export entity and you pay no tax on those export profits. The money then comes out into your pocket because it's a C-Corp, you pull it out, you pay 23% tax, 24% tax. Another approach. There's various approaches. Again, the regulations themselves are 200 pages long. They're very complex. We've got one lawyer that just spends his life on those provisions. Um, the concept is, while it's a tax-exempt entity, the money is locked in the C-Corp, usually the objective is to pull that money out and pay the tax at 24%. We do have some clients that, never, that don't pay the tax for a long period of time and keep the money as tax-exempt. It's another alternative. It's not one size fits all. Come, you have to come back and ask yourself, why are we going through this? This routine is because the United States government has decided we want to promote the export of certain goods. Certain goods are not subject to uh, the benefit of uh, the IC disc. Certain goods are, for instance, if you export oil or gas from the United States, that's not subject to the IC disc because that's not considered manufactured goods. But certainly in the case of the business that you folks are in, which is <coughs> various aspects of the hardwood industry, all of that would be subject to the, uh, uh, the provisions of the IC disc. Okay, so what qualifies? Uh, it's what the concept is: we're dealing with qualified export receipts. Um, you can deal with the direct export of goods. It might be indirect. Someone might be a, a distributor, where you. <coughs> Let's say you're, you're selling cabinet doors and you're selling off to someone who sells off abroad. And you're just an intermediary in the chain, but nonetheless you know that those goods are going abroad. You can benefit from that. We've got scrap dealers throughout the United States that do this. They accumulate scrap. They sell it to a larger mill. The mill aggregates the scrap, puts it on a boat, sends it to China or India. They qualify as well. As long as you can trace the fact that these goods are going abroad, uh, it qualifies. Again, there's got to be some documentation that you know they're going abroad. You can't do the situation where you know you say you're selling it off to someone and you think he sells it abroad. Um, sometimes uh, uh, we deal with leasing of equipment. Again, I don't think it applies to this group, but uh, um, uh, we have clients that uh, that lease large cranes, mobile cranes. D10 bulldozers, backhoes, excavators to the oil sands in Canada, large construction projects. We have clients that lease Caterpillar equipment for the laying of pipelines in South America. All that equipment, even if it's not sold, but leased, would qualify under this concept. Even architectural services and engineering services. Why? Again, the United States Congress is trying to encourage U.S. persons to sell goods abroad to try to earn dollars to bring it back. <clears throat> Again, just a hundred mile elevation of fiction. You can, you can go ahead and pay 45% federal income tax, forget the state tax, but just the federal income tax by not having an IC disc, or you can put an IC disc and pay 20, almost about 24% tax. Which one is better? It's your choice. Um, these are various rules that you follow. Uh, again, I, I think I, I need to leave you with the thought that the uh, IC disk is relatively complex in terms of operating. If you want to receive the benefits, certainly it can be done at a very simplistic level. Uh, most people think that doesn't make much sense. If there are two dollar bills on the ground, one is a $20 bill, one is a $100 bill. Most people want to go and try to pick up a $100 bill, especially if Congress said you can pick it up. And uh, you have to jump through a few more hoops to do that. 
Uh, this gives you an idea of just a depiction of using an IC disk versus not. Uh, I'm not sure that these numbers make sense, but we're just starting with a few with, a, with, with something that uh, that you can put your uh, put your arms around. Assuming you've got 30 million dollars of revenue, you've got domestic sales of 10, 20 million dollars of export sales, and you're working on a pre-tax margin of 20 percent, maybe a little high, maybe not. Depends on you know what the nature of your business is. Uh, going one approach with an IC, without an IC disk, you're going to pay 2.4 million dollars in tax. You're going to pay 1.7 million dollars in tax with an IC disk. So is it worth saving 600 thousand dollars after tax? At 600 thousand dollars after tax, that's like saving, gosh, that's like generating in this case four or five million dollars more revenue just by setting up an entity that Congress has been encouraging you to do for 50 years. Most people would say yes. The important concept here, of course, is if you're involved in export sales, this works. What happens if you don't have export sales? So here's another thing that Congress has done. This provision doesn't date back to the 1960s. This is the captive insurance company concept. This dates back to the 1917s. So if you feel badly that you haven't heard about the IC disc over the last 50 years, can feel a little bit worse that you haven't heard about this over the last hundred years. 